So we'll start there with the junior at higher level, 2019, paper one, question five. So it says the sets A, B and C are as follows. A is the set of multiples of two. So you've got two, four, six, A, 10, 12, and so on. B is a set of multiples of three. So you've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on. C is the multiples of four. So you, again, you have four, A, 12, um, 16, and so on, right? It says write down a number that is in A intersect B intersect C, okay? So basically that's the number that's going to appear in each of these sets, okay? So a number that's going to appear in each of these sets. So what I've done there is I've just wrote out the first few uh, terms in the first set. The multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. For set B, it was three, six, nine, 12, 15. I could have stayed going, but I kind of knew myself that it was going to be less than that. And for C, the multiples of four, we had four, eight, 12, 16, and so on. Okay, so we can see there that 12 is common to each of those sets. So the lowest common uh, term would be 12. Okay, so that brings us on to part B. So for part B, it says explain why C is a subset of A. Okay, so why is C a subset of A? So you can see here, uh, just before I explain it, you can see here that all of the values that occur in C also occur in A. Okay, and if I had continued there 16, my next term here would have been 16 because it's multiples of two. So the reason why C is a subset of A is because every term that occurs in A, I'm sorry, every term that occurs in C also occurs in A. So A is a subset, A is a set of even numbers, C is a subset of multiples of four, all multiples of four are even, C is a subset of A. Okay, so it's just saying that every term that occurs in set C will occur in set A because um, the multiples of two are obviously going to include the multiples of four. Okay, so the next part of that question they asked us to fill in the diagram. So it's always easiest just to fill in the middle part first. I brought that through there so we can see. So you can see there's number 12. It's going to be in all three sets. If it's going to be in all three sets. That means it's going to be here in the middle. Okay, so that's going to be part of set A, part of set B, and part of set C. The next one that you'll be looking for is which one is going to be, let's just say, for instance, if we were to look at this set here, okay? So if we were to look at this set here, that's going to be all of the multiples of two and all the multiples of three. So if we look at two and three, which number is common to both uh, A and B? So which one is common to A and B? And we can see there, common to A and B is going to be the number six. Okay, so that's our six there. If we look at the next set, the next set's going to be the ones that are common to, let's see this one here. So if we said the numbers that are common to A and C, so common to A and C, so A and C, number that's common to both, we have two, we have four is going to be common, obviously. Okay, so four is common. We have eight, which is common. And that's all we have from those numbers that we've listed, right? So I just filled in four. Okay. For the next part, we're looking at the numbers in this set here. Okay. So if we just fully read the question there, we can see it says because C is a subset of A, there are two regions of the Venn diagram that have no elements. Write an X in each of the regions on this Venn diagram. Okay. So we can see here that this set that we're looking at now is going to be one of those um, regions in the Venn diagram because there's going to be no numbers that fall into that bracket. So any multiples of three and multiples of four, we'll have 12, for instance. Um, there's going to be no other multiples of three and four that will fit into that bracket. So this here is going to be an X because that region has no, um, no numbers that will fall into that bracket. So then we can start looking at the outside and we can see then that, for instance, so back in up there. Okay, so the next one that we fill in, obviously we can fill in our two. So you can see there that we have the number two. So I'm just going to change the color of that and we'll put that there. So we've got the number two there, which fills in there. We've got the number 10, which we could have put in here if we wanted to. Okay. We've got the number, um, change the color there. So the next one there we have is the number three and nine, right? 
So three and nine will fall into that bracket there. So put that number three, which falls in here. And then we've got, obviously our 12 is already filled in, 12 is yellow. So that leaves us with this last region here, which is going to be the two regions that are going to be empty. Now, in part D of that question, just says, each of the other five regions in the Venn diagram has some elements. In each of the five regions in the Venn diagram, write in one element in that region. So you can see there that we had one element in each of those regions as arrested. Okay.